It was 1941. We trained in New Zealand for two, three months, and then over to Egypt, and we did, well, in my case, we did a, a month's training, and then we were shipped off to, to Greece. I wanted to go to the war. I'd, I was the, the fourth one of brothers to go there, and uh, I wanted to get the word back for what they did. The, two of them had a poor war. One was killed, and the other one was a POW, wasn't it? Yeah. So uh, I was cheeky enough to think I was going to do the whole lot. <laughs> the NCOs were told if they didn't get on top of us, we'd get on top of them. So they marched us everywhere. Rifle drill, all that sort of thing. Landed in uh, Egypt, Port Said, and uh, stayed there for extra training for a while and over to Italy. I left here on my 21st birthday and I was back before I was 22. I was severely wounded in Italy. Yes, I had 14 months in hospital. Well, we weren't prepared for the gunfire. We could hear it, and we were told that that is for real. So we took three days to get to where it was real. And we were barely ready for that, you know. And being an infantry bloke, that's front line stuff. And one night we weren't prepared for, we were told to fix the bayonets, which meant there'd be some hand-to-hand -hand fighting. We weren't ready for that. We were close to the enemy, very close. On one occasion they got in behind us, cut us off and we had to get out of that. It was hard going. I was so damn scared some of the time. You didn't get up to high things, just kept yourself. I think you're so involved in what you're doing. We knew what we were there for, so it was, you know, you just accepted it. We all had our thoughts of home and our friends and so forth. It wasn't a, a load of laughs, but uh, it, it, it wasn't too bad really. If you had friends, and they were great friends, and if you got into a bit of a skiff somewhere or other, well, they, you didn't stay along, the mates would drag you out and Vicky work it and so. We, we had many other close friends around us, but you sort of formed into little cliques and uh, looked after yourself, one looked after the other. So that's the sort of life they had. You live for them, you did everything with them, so you made, your rain didn't matter. They all had a little pub tents. And that was the way they lived. Yeah. We were known as the Three Musketeers. The other fellows are dead now. But we were together through training college and we ended up in the same company in Italy. And you see that tent? You see what they've done with it? Well, this is what we did over there. We countersunk them. Because when we were bombed at night time, we didn't have to run into slit trenches, or we used to try to get there first. And but one episode we had, I think there was about 29 tents in the unit, and the bombs were close enough to blow them all over. And the only injuries were you got when a tent pole landed on you or something. <laughs> I asked one girl if she'd marry me, and she said no. And the other girl I didn't ask. But when I came home, uh, they were unattached still, but the one I'd asked to marry me, she had joined the Air Force and she went away up to uh, Blenheim, so that gave the other one a free run home. <laughs> and welcomed me back. We got engaged pretty well straight away, and she became my wife for 58 years. <laughs> 